One of the most common criticisms of Escape from Tarkov is that the flea market ruined the game, and many people think that the game would be infinitely better if they removed the flea market entirely. In this video, I want to break down how I think that the flea market is a symptom, not the core problem, and how the game has evolved so much in the years that we've had the flea market that if we got rid of it today, it wouldn't actually fix anything. I want to take a quick second and thank Outplayed for sponsoring this video. Outplayed is a free program that allows you to record, organize, edit, and share your best gameplay moments. You can manually record clips, record entire sessions, or in certain games, it actually can be automatically triggered by certain events like headshots or a kill. There are over 300 supported games. As you can see here, I just type in Escape from Tarkov and then there we go. And then I can set up the quality of the recording and the key binds on how I want to set it up for me. Once you have your highlights, you can edit them all right there in the app and then share them with all your friends. I say all the time that the best way to get better at Escape from Tarkov is to record your gameplay back and watch it. And that couldn't be any easier with Outplayed. So thank you again, Outplayed for sponsoring this video. So we have to start with why people think the flea market is bad. Now, I'm not saying that everybody thinks this. Unsurprisingly, it's pretty split. And if you don't think the flea market is bad, then that's totally fine. And to be clear, even though I do think the flea market should stay in the game, this video is not at all a defense of Escape from Tarkov's economy. It's bad. It needs a lot of work. But the point of this video is to show that the flea market is only a small part of that. But the two most common reasons that I could find from those people that want it removed are that one, it's too easy to get end game gear like guns, ammo, armor. And two, it's way too easy to get rich and make tons of money. If there are other reasons that you think it should go, please let me know down in the comments below and maybe we can discuss those as well. But for now, these are the two that I feel are most common. Now, the big problem here is that we have had the flea market for several years now and the market and the game around it has changed a lot in that time. Let's take a look at the flea market. When it first came into the game, you could sell literally anything you wanted at any time. I used to sit on the flea and just watch ammo and armor prices for hours to buy low, sell high and make millions. Not to mention that the fee to list something was a fraction of what it is now. Now, this was definitely met with some pushback as it seemed to kill the spirit of Tarkov and the brutality of it. You can make tons of money and just buy yourself through almost all the quests and buy some of the rarest items in the game. It definitely did have its merits, though, since some people would often get stuck on key locked quests for weeks or even months if you couldn't find the key. And rare items like docs cases and key tools were suddenly in reach if you could spend some time grinding up some cash. The flea market has changed a lot since then. In no specific order, we saw the removal of priority listings, the removal of the listing timer, several significant hikes in the listing fee, the reduction of the amount of available offers, an increase in the amount of rep needed to get more offers, the restriction of what can or cannot be sold, currently things like cases and some armors and guns can't be sold on the flea market, and finally, the introduction of the found in raid mechanic. Now we could talk about this for hours, but suffice it to say that the found in raid mechanic changed the game in its entirety. Even if you never sell anything on the flea, this affects you because of quests and a bunch of stuff that you need found in raid. Now, if we look outside the actual flea market, Tarkov in general has changed a lot through the years as well, specifically around the economy. We saw the introduction of the hideout, which allows us to craft different things to either use, turn in for quests or sell for profit, not to mention the ability to basically print money with the Bitcoin farm. We've gotten hundreds of new items and valuables added to the game, dozens of new guns, armor, stims, and other combat-related gear, and almost all of this gear ends up at the traders at some level or another. And most recently, we saw a slew of changes to what can and cannot be dropped in raid to combat RMT. So with all that in mind, let's go back and take a look at those two claims about the fleet. The first one was, it's too easy to get end game gear. While it's definitely true that the flea market was at one point the best way to get just about anything you wanted, with the recent restrictions to what can be bought or sold, this isn't really the case anymore, and yet you still see high-level players running around with meta mutants, RD704s, and MDRs all the time. Why? The traders. Let's take a look at what you can actually get from max traders. I can purchase every single thing that you see on the screen right now, every single reset from the traders. Every gun, every optic, every attachment, every single reset. Two decked out mutants, three RD704s, two MDRs, three M4s, a few SR25s, and that doesn't even include some of the other guns, various class five or six armors that you can barter for. I can even craft and buy some really good ammo and even get some of the best NVGs in the game as well. Now, that's not to say that there are no restrictions. Obviously, with things like ammo, I can't make 30 rounds of M61 last three hours, most likely. And a few of these attachments that would be considered meta are still purchasable on the flea market, some for a little bit cheaper, some for more expensive, but it allows people that don't have max traders to get them. But the point is that the sheer volume of what you can get from the traders means that you don't really need the flea market because you can bounce around between the three or four meta gear sets. If we deleted the flea market today, I don't think you would see much of a difference in what quote unquote meta gear was being used by high level players. You wouldn't be taking away their access. You would be effectively just making a few attachments slightly more expensive. Now, I know that not everybody can get max traders and that is totally fine and definitely worth acknowledging, but I don't think that plays a huge part in this conversation because of how the game is already set up. Whether we remove the flea market or not, you currently can't buy a mutant, for example, unless you have max traders. If we remove the flea, it doesn't make it harder for the high level players because 
they're already purchasing it from the traders not to flee anyway. And if we keep the flea market, it's not like it's making it easier for casual players to purchase it because once again, they can't purchase it from the fleet. They have to either find it or get to max traders. So again, if we're specifically talking about some of the quote unquote metagear, removing the flea market doesn't really change much. Additionally, one of the most common responses I saw from the people that wanted the flea market changed and removed was that they missed how impactful it was to find a metagun on somebody before the flea. You know, the old back in my day, guns were super rare type thing. Now, this is definitely a can of worms on subjectively what type of experience you want Tarkov to be. I definitely lean more towards that of wanting those things to be rare. But again, because you can buy everything from the traders, the flea isn't really the cause of this problem either. The point is that as more gear got added to the game, almost all of that gear got added to the traders as well. To the point where you have so much to choose from outside of the fleet that it ends up just becoming a money game. Make a bunch of money and buy whatever you want. It's just from the traders now instead of from the fleet. Now, talking about money leads us to that second claim about the flea market, which is that the flea makes it too easy to make a ton of money. Now, I don't think anybody would argue that the best way to make money and escape from Tarkov is to sell valuable items on the flea market. However, I don't think it's nearly as impactful as it once was, and at the same time, it's gotten more impactful to sell stuff straight to the traders. The restrictions on what is sellable and the significant fee hikes made it harder to make large sums of money all at once on the flea market. The market used to decide what the value of a Ledex or a high value key or a hideout upgrade item was, but now these items seem to have a hard cap. It's easy to actually pay more than your asking price in a listing fee. This made it nearly impossible to be rewarded with finding an ultra rare item with a huge lump sum of cash. So now the way to make money on the flea is with hundreds of smaller transactions as opposed to a few big ones, which once again means that the flea is definitely still king for making money, but it's not by as big of a margin as it used to be. And a lot of times what we end up with is items that sell on the flea for barely over a profit of what they can be sold to the trader for. Now we can take a look at a few items to really see how this plays out. Now we're going to be assuming that you don't have max hideout skill and that you don't have intelligence center level three up. All of those things can affect how much the fee that you pay is, but I think that most players won't have intel center level three and max max hideout. But we can take a look at something like a Ledex, where it's definitely still worth finding these and selling them on the flea market. You can make a ton of money, but you can see that fee hike really take effect here. 120 to 150,000 rubles just to list it. Some treasure items like Bronze Lion sell for anywhere between 102 to 115,000 rubles on the flea, but have an 18,000 ruble fee associated with them. So you would actually end up making more money by just selling it straight to therapists for 102,000 rubles. We can take a look at some of the hideout items that you need for upgrades or for certain barters or crafts, something like the Amelia Rye Croutons, which are really sought after earlier in the wipe. Selling it for even 13,000 rubles has a almost 14,000 ruble fee attached to it. And this is an item where traditionally, even just selling it for five or 10,000 rubles, you would make a lot more money since what you sell as a therapist for is only 188 rubles, but now you can't really seem to do that anymore. And just like we said with some of the ultra rare items as well, if you find those, you can't be rewarded with a big lump sum of cash anymore. You found a green key card and you want to sell it for 10 million rubles. Well, you're going to have a 22 million ruble fee associated with that. You find a black key card and you want to sell it for 8 million rubles. Well, that's going to cost you just under 16 million rubles to list. Now, once again, that doesn't mean you can't make money on the flea market. There are tons of items like magazines for guns that are super rare, like MP740 rounder mags, where you can make a ton of money. Any sort of attachment that's close to or at the meta that you currently can still sell on the flea market, you can definitely turn a profit for, something like a voodoo scope. And there are definitely some barter items or hideout items that people buy in bulk to do barters on resets, like the PCBs for the 60 rounder mags, or a lot of the fabrics as well that trade for the barters, you can make really good profits on. So again, it's not that you can't make money on the flea market, it's just that it keeps getting a little bit harder and a little little bit harder. And the restrictions and changes to the flea market don't even tell the whole story. Now that it's harder to make as much money on the flea as we used to, it's also easier to make tons of money without the flea. So many new treasure and tech items have been added to the game over the years, and they are all incredibly valuable even to the traders. It used to be that almost everything you found in raid had an extremely low value if you sold it to the traders, except for gear. And now that's almost entirely flipped. People are frequently leaving behind guns and armor so they can take more tech loot, treasure items, or little things that they can sell for money. And most of these things have a really good value to the traders as well. I used to do scav raids with my community every stream on reserve, and we would go in, hit the button, kill the raiders, divide the loot, and then either sell or use the great loot. Good armors, ammos, and attachments, and more meant really easy money, and there were so many tech spawns everywhere as well. Now we do the same thing, but on Lighthouse. I cannot tell you how many times I've walked out of Lighthouse with six to 800,000 rubles worth of stuff, and the reality is that that's probably still four to 500,000 rubles worth of stuff if I just sold it all to the vendors. Bitcoins, rollers, GPUs, tech loot, stims, all just laying around, even if we only had 10 or 15 minutes left in the raid, 
And then there's all the rogue loot if you can pick off a few of them as well. Of course, this doesn't just apply to scavs. You can go in as a PMC and make it out huge as well. The point is that it's not only harder to make money on the flea now, but there are more intrinsically valuable items that there have ever been, and they're not that hard to find. If we delete the flea market today, yes, of course people would make less money and that would be a huge shock to the economy, but I don't think it would be as significant as people think, and it would most likely end up disproportionately affecting the people that can't play Tarkov a ton. Somebody that plays eight plus hours a day would probably just end up with 80 or 90 million instead of 120 million. All of this doesn't even include how removing the flea market would affect other parts of the game as well. The founded raid mechanic would be pointless and even more confusing. In some ways, the game would actually be harder than it used to be, and I don't think people consider this often. You might get stuck for weeks looking for a key for a quest, and now your friend can't even drop that key for you like we used to do. Maybe you have a buddy that found an extra docs case. Well, he can't drop that for you either. For all the back in my day people, that was a huge part of the game. So in conclusion, if the flea market's not the problem, then what is? Well, I definitely want to be clear that I in no way think the flea market is perfect in its current implementation, actually far from it. But like we said at the beginning of the video, I also don't think it's the core problem around Tarkov's economy, but more a symptom of some of the bigger problems. I think BSG first has to figure out how much access they want us to have to gear, and then they need to look at what is available from the traders, what spawns in raid and how frequently, and then also take a look at the flea market and how it functions. Then they have to decide how much of the game's progression they want to be tied to the economy. A keys is a great example of this. They don't want people buying all the quest keys for super cheap and blowing through the content, but any change they make to the quest keys affects all the keys. And then if they don't adjust the spawn rates of this keys, well then ultimately it still feels like everybody ends up going back to the fleet to get them anyway. Now, I don't know how to balance all that. The inspiration of this video was just that if we got rid of the flea market now, I don't think it would have the effect that people want it to have. The game has changed too much around the flea market that pulling it out now would just cause more frustration. Balance is incredibly hard and complicated, and to be honest, it might be something that they are just waiting to do until the game gets closer to release. Maybe they want us to use all the guns and gear to test it, maybe they want to see how players act when they get super rich, or they want to see how players are getting super rich so they can change it later, or maybe they're just brain dead and don't know how to balance the game. Without actually being there in the office, seeing what they're working on, seeing what their priority list is, there's no way to know if they have all of this planned out to the T or if they're just reacting as they go along. I think what understandably frustrates the community is that everything they're doing seems just like a half measure. They remove some things from the flea market, but not others. They do all of these hikes to the fee that don't seem to make any sense. And these things end up just feeling like half band-aids that end up frustrating almost every single player, no matter what your play style is. There are definitely lots of ideas on what they could do, what they could do long-term and even short-term to make it better in the now. And I'd love to hear yours. I did a YouTube poll on the subject and some of the people had some really, really cool ideas. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you like the flea market the way it is now? Do you want it changed? Or do you just want to wait until the game is more fleshed out to make an opinion? Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel. We talk about stuff like this all the time over on my Twitch stream, where I stream Escape from Tarkov about six days a week. The links for that are down below as well. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord community is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.